Alison Arngrim played a character that millions of people around the world, simply put, hated. But the actress says her popular character, Nellie Olson of Little House on the Prairie, was a girl she grew to love. And her memoir turned one woman show, Confessions of a Prairie Bitch. Arngrim says Nellie Olson aided and protected her like no other creature, real or imagined. And that Nellie transformed her from a shy, abused little girl, afraid of her own shadow, to the quote, in your face, outspoken, world traveling, politically active, big mouth bitch, her words, not mine, that she is today. The much loved actress is performing her one woman show laced with comedy and confessions here in New York this week for the Rochester Fringe Festival. And before she hits the stage, she's joining me in the studio to share more. Alison Arngrim, it is a pleasure to Thank have you. you. Welcome. Thank you. Great introduction. Thank you. <laughs> so I have to ask Thank you, of all the villains in the yes. world of television, what is it about Nellie that people simply cannot shake. I think we all know someone like that. The number of people who have told me over the years, oh my God, there was this girl at my school and, and she was she was so Nellie. In fact, years ago, Melissa Gilbert was speaking yeah. at a school in Ireland and they refer to people who are bullies now as the Nelly. It's no become kidding. like a word. <laughs> and oh so people were like, that. so people say, I know someone. And the number of people said, yeah, and there's a Mrs. Olson at my job. It's all the grown ups know Mrs. Olson and all the kids know an Ellie. It's like, oh, we all know that girl. <laughs> and I, and I, I worked hard to be irritating. I really did. Um, you know, the Nellie in the books was fairly obnoxious. Yeah. And apparently the real Nellie in real life was, was, was a, a problem. Uh, she's based on three people historically. Apparently we're all terrible. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> to three people to be that bad. But when we're doing the show, I mean, I, I would, I would have scenes. And say, how can, how can I say this so I really want to punch myself in the face? How can I really just, yeah. Yeah. Well, you have said, and you say this, you've taken a lot of heat for this character. I mean, and you describe how, I think it was the LA County Fair, your, a woman yes. comes up, she looks hot and bothered, and all of a, all of a sudden she utters the words, I forgive you, as though you had done something, but obviously referencing this character. She was serious. She was serious. This woman came up to my table, and I'm sitting there, and people be coming up, love your show. Some yeah. people were like, oh, I hated you, oh, I just hated you. <laughs> this woman looked like she was going to lose it, and she just went, I forgive you and <laughs> walked out. I was like, what, what, do, what do I say? What, right. what do I even do? Right. And it was so stunning. And my husband was in hysterics. He's going, again, again, we did, okay. Um, and, and it was, it was, I had hit such a nerve. She had had such yeah. an emotion. Little House on the Prairie, very emotional show. And then I show up and I'm, I'm so mean that it had stuck with her her whole life. Isn't that something? I, I, what do you think it is that makes it difficult for people to differentiate between a character, a fictional character versus the person in I'm real life. I'm always amazed at that. I mean, of course, I grew up with TV. I grew up with a family of actors. Yeah. I, everybody I knew was on sh in show business. So, and I, I, I always liked the villains in movies and TV shows. So I, right away, it's like, yeah, I'm the villain. I knew. I was like, no, it's not me. I swear it's not me. <laughs> so I got, and so I was like, Wow, you really, I mean, do you believe that people are talking to through the television? Um, some people, they really do. They don't. But Little House is different. I've noticed that when we do events with actors from other shows, and we'll have a bunch of actors from Little House, the other shows, they're a show, we're real. <laughs> Which is kind of freaky that people will come up and they just, they're immediately transported back to their childhood. If they see me, if they see Melissa, if they see Dean Butler, who's Almanzo, they just suddenly go, ah, ah, <laughs> I've gone back to the 70s. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, and I, I love that you've done this, and I'm curious as to, you know, some people would take that as a burden, like they would look at it as yeah. a burden, but you have found out, and why was it important for you to do this, to find it, to really turn it around and make it work for you in such a comedic way? Well, I saw what was happening with so many actors, especially child actors, it's very difficult. You, know, you go to work as a kid, you're, you're, you have adult responsibilities, it is a real strain, and that's why a lot of child actors, it's very difficult for them to adjust to being adults. And I was seeing the problem people were having were very adult identified with characters. Uh, Jane North, who's Dennis the Menace. People were very identified with their characters. And they were really struggling. They were talking about how hard it was. And I, I, I called it the bad tattoo syndrome. I said, well, you get a crazy tattoo. And at first, you're showing everyone. And then at some point, you're embarrassed. You grow up, and you go, yeah, what was I thinking? And you wear the long sleeves. And then eventually, you don't care anymore. And you say, yeah, I was drunk. I was in the Navy. And, and you don't care. And I say, it's, somehow, it has to be that it's just part of me. It's just this other part of me that's there. Because I said, well, uh, it also shows in 140 countries and everyone knows who I am and I'm recognizable. I said, well, it's either get plastic surgery and find a country they didn't watch it in <laughs> or find a way to make this work. It's like yeah. either have every single day be shut up, stop talking to me about Nellie Olson. And I noticed how much time 
people had to spend saying, do not talk about this show. And I thought, well, let me, how many hours in the course of a week do you blow having to say, don't talk yeah. about the silly show? What if I found a way to turn it around and make it work to my advantage? <laughs> which, which I feel I have. It's really fun. I enjoy it. My show is a hoot. You should come. It'll be great. Let's take a clip. We have a short clip yes. of your one-woman show, Confessions <laughs> of a Prairie Bitch. This is for a viewer, so let's take a look. Starting with the most pressing question, why am I such a bitch? <laughs> you want to know why I'm a bitch? I'll tell you why I'm a bitch. Do you have any idea the shit I have had to put up with? <laughs> Do you know what it means to be Nellie Olson? <laughs> it means that somebody, somewhere, at least once a day, has called me a bitch to my face every day since I was 11 years old. Some things in this life that I will never live down. <laughs> Any idiot can be liked. It takes talent to scare the shit out of people. So, Allison, <laughs> with true. a title that starts with Confessions, we know that there must be yes. several great golden nuggets that you share. I'm, I'm curious if you could just give us a glimpse into well, something that you share that people might not it's expect. It's true. As, I, as you saw in the clip, it, it, it's all true. It, it, what happened was I was doing regular sort of stand-up, and then it was in 2002, I realized, just let's just tell them actual, all, all true stories. Everything is a true story from my life. Yes, I did Fantasy Island, where I played a hooker, and Eve Plum, Jan Brady, played my mother, which makes no sense. <laughs> yes, I was sexually harassed by Hervé Villachez, as was apparently everyone in the entire universe. Um, yes, um, I was hit with a cup of orange soda during the Santa Claus Lane Hollywood Christmas parade. Um, yes, uh, my boob fell out on Dance Fever on live television, uh, and I live to tell the tale. Yes, <laughs> yes Dan Haggerty, Grizzly Adams hit on me at a party at Brenda Vaccaro's Christmas party. Um, yes, it, I have no famous people I've slept with. I have a long list of famous people who tried to sleep with me and I turned mm -hmm. them down. So I have all these famous people I refused to sleep with. Uh, it's, it's wonderfully nutty. It's all true stories. It's all about my father working for Liberace and my mother being the voice of Casper the Friendly Ghost and every crazy, and growing up in Hollywood. And people are fascinated with ex-child stars and yeah. the insanity of Hollywood. And so this is the show that tells you what that's like to survive. And as I said, somebody somewhere has called me a, a bitch to my face every single day since I was 11 years old. And what, what, how do you live with that? What do you do? Right. How do you get through the day right. when right. that is your life? Right. How, in what ways do you think of all your years on Little House on the Prairie, how do you think that, that Nellie and that character impacted the choices that you made in terms of acting roles and so on moving forward? Absolutely. There was totally, absolutely typecasting. The number of times where it's like, I, I wanted to read for the part of that nice girl. They wouldn't have me in. <laughs> um, but then they will call me for the bitch. And then it got funny because people said, well, we were going to call you, but we didn't want to call you. We thought you'd be insulted because she's the bitchy character. And I'm yeah. like, call me. Yeah. So now I'm like, yes, please call me to play someone terrible. It's great. But it's a character role, technically. And character actresses, being beautiful is great, but playing character lasts forever. And playing the villain or the funny person, you much more longevity than just being the pretty nice girl. So I was kind of like, oh, in the long run, I seem to have scored, yes. Um, so playing the character role, it does give you more leeway. You can play more interesting parts. You can do crazier things. And, and because I've already been called every name in the book and had people throw things at me, I have nowhere to go but up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in, in your memoir and, and in the show, you, you share these tales mm -hmm. of your upbringing, as you mentioned, um, this bohemian uh, to put it life in, yes, in West yes, Hollywood uh, with your family. actor parents, yes. uh, your actor brother, who at one point was on the cover of Teen Magazines. And the tales of your life, they are, Allison, they're filled with excitement and amusement, but there's also heartbreak and pain uh, in reading your memoir. And, and you share the story of, of being sexually abused by yes. your older brother mm -hmm. at the beginning at the age of six. And talk to me about why 
it was so imperative for you to be candid about this um, in your memoir. I thought, well, if I'm going to tell my life story, I'm going to tell my life story. If I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell it. And then I'd also, I'd come somewhat public on uh, the Larry King show yes. because I was fighting to change a law in California, the incest exception, which was allowing well, child predators to go free and serve no jail time as long as they had the sense to pick a victim that they were related to, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. makes no sense exactly. to anybody normal. It's going, wait, wait, wait what? And then, but right. that was that was the law. So yeah. we've changed that in several states. Yeah. And I, because I was going public with that for that, I was asked, well, did this happen to you? And well, yes, it did. And so I wound up going very bad. It, it, it helped. It did. It got us a lot of support and we changed the law. So then, but once the cat's out of the bag. So when I was doing my memoir, I went, well, that's it. We're, we're telling everything. And so many people have reached out to me that my story was not different. Yeah. My story was exactly the same as everybody else. This has happened to over and over again. I mean, that's what we talk about, the Me Too movement, that, that people saying, why are these stories so similar? Because apparently these guys have no imagination or original material. And so these people who abuse people, it's, it's, they're all so the same. And in a way it's depressing and in a way it's valuable for victims. You go, oh wait, I, I'm, I'm not different. It wasn't something unusual, it wasn't me. Right. They do this to everybody, ugh. So I wanted to, to get that out there. And the fact that Nelly, being Nelly, mm -hmm. it did save mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. I was so Ta scared yeah. and shy and I was bullied at school and now I was playing someone people were afraid of. It's like, I, I said it was like those nature specials where they talk about the animals that change their coloring to look like something more dangerous yeah. in the wild. Right. <laughs> it's right. like it's one of those, yes. like camouflage. <laughs> um, yes, I am Nelly, run. <laughs> and it, it, it really, really helped. And now I look at my life like, this is great. And, and it helped a lot too because I've been working with National Association to Protect yes. Children, protect.org, yeah. and we've changed laws all over the country, and we're still doing all sorts of amazing things with getting high-tech stuff to yeah. police, and uh, the new sunshine laws where we feel people should be able to easily find out what is a judge's or prosecutor's yes. record on prosecuting mm -hmm. sexual offenses? How can I find this out before, say, I vote for them? And we want to make that kind of stuff available. Being able to do this with my reputation as, as well, maybe we shouldn't get her mad because she might go Nelly on us. It, it's been quite helpful. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, in reading, in reading uh, your memoir, you, you talk about how this character of Nelly, you could, you were just, you were able to take what she was doing. It was almost like therapeutic in so oh, many absolutely. words. Just in, in terms of the acting out of the things that she would do or say. Because I'm, I'm more kind of chill and calm, but Nelly's like screaming and yelling yeah. and throwing things. And it's just to be able to let all of that stress and anxiety out, out it's so healthy. I had somewhere safe to yeah. let all that rage and insanity out. And then I had this really supportive environment on the show. So, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have done better. Well, you, as you've mentioned, you really have taken up the fight to ensure that kids, kids in Hollywood who are, are actors oh, yeah. and kids everywhere, um, they're aware of the dangers that exist, unfortunately, exactly. in this industry. Uh, and I want to know what, you were talking just a little bit about this, what resources are available today that maybe you didn't have oh, uh, man, when you were younger yeah. that people can tap into? Well, if you, especially if you're a kid actor, there's a minor consideration, which uh, I worry about. Paul Peterson started uh, from, from the Donna Reed Show. Yeah. That's all, and you can talk to them. And then um, there's now a program called called Looking Ahead, and this is a program that kid actors can sign up for. And yeah, they have outings and fun things, but they have people to talk to about your finances, about your education, wow. about making plans for if you do leave the business, there's someone there to check in with, and they work with the, the Actors Fund and the union, and, uh, and of course, there's now programs at the Screen Actors Guild of the union to help child actors. All of these things, none of, none of that existed. And then, wow. so now, of course, we have Protect. Um, of course, if you are in crisis right now, there is 1-800-4-CHILD, which is Child Help, which is a hotline. If you are being abused, you know someone. And you can actually, you know, you can call them if you were abused as a child, just haven't told anybody and need to talk. They have a great hotline. There's so many resources now with, with child, with RAIN, the, mm -hmm. the Rape and Incest Network. None of these things existed when I was a child. We didn't even have, you know, little brochures. There were no ABC after school specials, right, as I say, right, talking right, about. Right, exactly. Now exactly. people talk about this. Yes. When I was a child, people did not yeah. talk about these things at all. Mm -hmm. Now people are very open. You now have much younger people reporting that they're being abused and getting help much, much earlier, which I'm, I'm really relieved about. 
Well, I, I know that when talking to people about you being on the show, eyes opened up. They were thrilled that you were coming to Rochester okay. and that, you were, that you're here right now. What is it I'm curious, that you love about <laughs> taking the story of your life and sharing it with the world? And really, you are so funny and doing it in this, this great comedic way. What do you love about it? And, and how does it fulfill you? It is a crazy story. And growing up and all of my life and as a young adult, an adult people would say, are you writing this stuff down? Because <laughs> your this, memory, this, I there should be a it. book. Because right. I, all these weird things would happen. Well, the story of my mother and my family meeting the Satanists in the parking lot of my show, because of course, you know, what? <laughs> and it's like these things would happen, never go, what, what was that? What was that that just happened? And like, are you taking notes? Yes, yes I am. And so all the bizarro things that have happened to me because of being Nellie or being me, yeah. I, I put them all in there. And, and that's why in the show I have a question and answer segment. We have Ask Allison nice. Anything. I have cards made up that actually say Ask Allison yeah. Anything. Yeah. And I take them and I totally live. I don't. I don't yeah. censor them. I go. Okay, this is what you ask. And we have a big Q and A segment, so we will answer your questions. And it's just, I love people's reactions. I, people are still their eyes sort of light, and they go, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, st I'm still mad at you. I'm still mad at you. Yeah. Forty five years later, I'm still mad at you. Um, and and it's very exciting. I I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we are unfortunately out of time, but a huge thank you, thank to you Allison so Arngrim, for, for joining me today. Thank you. And you can hear much more from Arngrim and her one woman show, Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, that is taking place this Friday, nice. September 21st, and Saturday, September 22nd, at the Rochester Fringe Festival. Now, Arngram's show will be held at the School of the Arts. So for more information and to get your tickets, go to rochesterfringe.com.